the connection forms are expressed in the term of the group forms. And by the way, from this you can also see that the connection forms are one forms actually. Okay? That's it. These are one forms right? because, because these are one forms, these are just scalars actually. So you have a linear combination of one forms. And that is what you call the connection forms. You can also interpret the connection form as the uh, one form. Okay. Uh, I'll get into the examples. But that's just a that's just playing around with, with the operator actually. That's just playing around with the operator. So first we... Yeah, it's almost like a, that is omega i j 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 omega i So that's just a directional derivative. 
So it's like computing, computing the thrush head derivative in our previous notation of a scalar field in the direction of some heavy okay, E i So this would be what by definition? E i of x. Direction derivative of E i. So what is the directional derivative of a scalar field in the direction of Gradient of f dot e i. Gradient of f dot e i. So the gradient of f dot e i would be would be partial derivative. Partial derivative. So that's, that's nothing. It's just a partial derivative. So it's partial f by partial x i. Okay, it's a partial because you, you take the gradient of f, you multiply with e i, and then you get partial. So that's just a partial derivative. So you see, we need we we have to spend time on. So this, this is going to be uh, partial vj uh, vi over partial xj actually. This is going to be my case. And vi plus uh, vi and we know it this buddy. Okay? So this is uh, Gamma K and uh, let me correct it. Okay, so you're going to be I J. Are we happy with this? No, sir, J. J. Gamma K J I and T K. This actually. Is it making sense? So, what would be. Uh, Next thing, the next thing would be, so you see, the, the index on which you are taking sum is a dummy index actually. So you can replace it with any variable you want. It's not going to make any difference. Okay? So I have partial vi by, okay, partial xj plus. Can I do this? If I replace K and I, would that make any difference? So see, you have a sum on I and you have a sum on K. What if, if I put an I here, okay, and replace K by I, okay? So what would be the benefit of it? What would that achieve? So, so if you replace k by i and i by k, so you're gonna get so you're gonna get vk vk gamma i jk okay and you're gonna get ei I have also ei here actually. Now the good thing would be that now I can combine these two terms. That's what would be the benefit actually that I can. I can see this as partial E i by partial x j e i plus v k gamma i j k times v k. Yes, common but okay. Something like that. So you're gonna get that. So what are this guy is telling you? This guy is telling you an interesting story. Okay. You have to be keep one thing in head that this frame does not always mean the standard basis of R n. It's not always the standard basis of R n. Okay? Yes. So this is just an abstract symbol. So, so if it is, for example, uh, cylindrical polar coordinates, then E1 would be ER, and E2 would be E theta, and E3 would be E theta. So if it's cylindrical coordinates, you're going to get you know, ER, E theta, E phi. Are you getting the point? Okay? Here's an interesting question. Uh, if you take E to be 
is standard Euclidean vector. Okay? If you take E to be standard Euclidean vector. Or maybe before doing that, maybe you call something that you learned previously. So we know what's fresh a derivative.
partial by partial xi, then you can do what? Compute the directional derivative of fi in the direction of x and you know and multiply them with these say, what you call tangent vectors. So this would be the case. So if, if using this definition, which is true in Rn, what would be this? So I need to compute. Okay. Uh, and what is what is this guy? So if I want to explicitly write it. So this is the gradient of F okay, with respect to what? Uh, with respect to what? Okay. Okay, X actually, whatever the vector attached to this is. Basically, if you're computing it at point X, you're going to get something like that. Now think about it. Now, what is your Fi in this case? So my, so my f1 is 1 and f2 is 0 and f3 is 0. Okay, so that is what my f is in this case. Okay, the point. Now, if I compute the gradient of f actually, so no matter okay, what you have, so you're going to get a 0. And hence the dot product is 0, hence the, this guy is 0, so this is 0. And if you want to express this 0, in the terms of the basis vector, then what choice you have? So you have a 0 e1 plus 0 e2 plus 0 e3. And these are your Christoffel symbols. Yeah, because that's what the Christoffel symbols tells you. That how you get the Christoffel symbol? That you take this vector and express it in the terms of you know the frame, and whatever coefficients you get. As a result, are your Christoffel symbol, and you see that the Christoffel symbols are identically zero in you know in the Euclidean basis case. Actually, I get the point. So they are identically zero, and hence, like okay, in, when you are in Euclidean doing things in Euclidean sense, this term does not appear. But if you replace this e i by maybe for example e r e theta or uh, e theta e r you know e r e z this is not necessarily zero so you will get some coefficients and hence you get you know some test of the symbols yes. okay so in other words if you are doing a differentiation of a vector field of an arbitrary vector field in the direction of not Euclidean basis, these are not Euclidean, in, in the direction of an arbitrary frame vector actually. Okay? Then, then these two terms will appear. Yes, sir. Okay? One is as per our inclusion, okay, gradient, okay? And one, that is correction term actually, okay? So that's what it makes it different from. So we, we have it. We have defined tangent space for Rn, but we haven't defined tangent space for some other, like we were talking about. Ah, you can have, so if you have a frame, for example, this Er, E theta, Ez, okay, so we discussed it basically that, you know, if you have a curve linear coordinates, okay, so you can, you can get, for example, a coordinate surface, and on that coordinate surface, take a point and you can have a frame here. So, so if, even if you read, for example, the notes where it represents, for example, the cylindrical coordinates, it talks about a frame actually. Okay, E R E R E theta E Z. So you have a frame there. No, uh, what I was going to say, this map is uh, is defined from tangent space of R N to tangent space of no, R N, but expressed in what terms? Oh yes. Okay, so, so it's not necessary that you have a Euclidean so frame expressing it. So these, these are arbitrary frames. That's what is the whole, you know, kind of. Um, uh, that's why the whole argument that what you essentially you want to do something is that you did previously using Euclidean vectors. Now you want to do it through the arbitrary frame actually. Okay. And if this approach is correct, then you must get your previous results recovered from this approach actually as a particular case. Okay. 
So we can all, all we can already we can already have some intuition that yes, we are getting things. As, uh, but we're gonna get more. Alright. Last time. 
but like what is the relationship between these W's and these W's actually? Okay. So you can so we defined it last time that basically that if you, for example, this nothing is just basically that you multiply these W J I's with the metric tensor actually. Then it's gonna lower the index actually. Okay. So how we reach there? That if I want to compute, for example, the inner product of okay, the x e i with a bit of frame vector e k, then I know that this guy is what? This guy is e j w j i of x e k. Okay, that's a scalar. You can pull it out. W i j i of x and you get e j and e k and this is what this is what is the precise definition of g j k actually okay g j k the metric tensor so how do you define a metric we know that a metric is an outcome of an inner product actually okay that you know computing the inner product and defining the inner product uh, for the you know, frame vector side. So this is GJK. And we know that this GJK whenever it is multiplied with for example uh, you know a quantity or the, with a quantity with the upper index then it is going to lower the index. So if you multiply this you are going to get W uh, uh, the J, J will go away, so you're going to get not IK, but you're going to get WKI of X. Okay? So, this WKIs are what? These are basically these pointers. That's what. So, let's think about it. If, if you have WKIs, I can okay, recover WJIs easily. It's not a big deal. Just by dividing them or multiplying them with the inverse of this matrix. Okay? The inverse of the so you can easily get. So, so what I want to do is that essentially I want to prove that if your frame is an orthonormal frame and you have a causal connection, okay, with a matrix of metric, then your connection matrix could be a symmetric, anti-symmetric matrix actually. Okay? So it would be anti-symmetric. So in other words, if you have, if you have computing W12, you don't need to compute W21 actually. So you can just multiply it with minus and you know, just Okay, so it, 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 it's gonna turn your matrix into uh, it's going to it's going, it's going to pretty simplify it. You're going to see one example of it. So let's prove that why this is true. Why this is true? Yeah. Oh, sorry. Uh, connection compatible with the picture. Compatible. Then, if this is the case, then you have. Alright? And how many of you do you remember what is the meaning of a connection being compatible with the metric? So, we define it that if you, if you take, for example, this YZ in a product of two scalar feet. Okay. And you compute, so it's going to be scalar field essentially. And if you compute, if you compute the causal connection of this metric, then this must be same as uh, computing the connection of Y and taking in a product with Z plus Y and taking in a product with Z. So if this is true for all x, y, z, so you're going to say that, okay, 
the, the connection and the meter are compatible. And it's kind of a product rule, I mean, if you see actually. So whether this is, so that's a version of a product rule. Anyway. This is what is given to me, and let's do it. So how, how I'm doing it is this. Way. 